Hello everyone, um, somebody wanted some help on how to do the waffle stitch. First of all, I'm going to explain a little bit about the waffle stitch doing a graph down. Um, on the, the um, squares is each stitch for a corner to corner. Now, we do three, that counts as one stitch for a waffle stitch and that's three stitches. So, that's three six nine twelve fifteen stitches you'd have to do plus four if you was doing the waffle stitch let me explain it a little bit more here's one i've done each square is three stitches as you can see there And this is what it turns out like. It is bigger, but to compensate for that, I have um, used thinner yarn and a smaller hook. So this is roughly about 19 to 20 inches square. So it is going to be large and that's um, sort of 25 um, corner to corner squares. This one is the one I'm doing at the moment and I will show you how to change colour on this one. There you go. But first of all, I'm going to get you to start off. Oh, get this slip knot done first. There you go. So, when you're doing um, a graph gun for a waffle stitch, it's every square is three stitches. So, if you was doing a 25 by 25, it, the 25 squares, that's 75 plus 4. You always add the plus 4 at the end. And I'll show you why. I'll do 30 now. I hold my arm different to everybody, so you'll have to excuse me. One, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Now I've done my 30, so I've got three lots there. And that makes 10 stitches. Now I'm going to plus four. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to do, in US terms, double crochet, UK terms, treble, into the third stitch from the hook. and you double crochet all the way down into each and every stitch. Until you've reached the end. And once you've done that, you start with this row. Better off on the lighter colour. You start off with a double crochet, front post double crochet, two double crochets, front post double crochet, two 
double crochets, front post, double crochet, all the way back down after you finish this row. And then you always change your colour on the back. This is class, is the back. But I use the back of the design as the front of mine because I think it looks a bit neater and tidier. So you always add your colour on the back of the design. And this is how you do a change of colour. I'll just, I won't show the chart just in case, but you always do a single stitch first at the end of each row. And you let our last rows, because you find you've got two rows, one stitch left at each end of the row. That's your border stitch. That's just to keep things even if you're sewing things on. So you've got them two, that's why you've got the plus four on the end. So you've always got a border stitch. It's not part of the pattern. It's just your border stitch. Those are always double crochets no matter what. And you just do one more stitch and then you turn and then double crochet into the first stitch. This is your border stitch. Then you, because this is the back. It's from it's double crochet into the next stitch and front post then front post double crochet. From post now if I wanted to add the on say from there to there I'd have to normally add a new new bobbin but with this one all you have to do if it's going to carry on up to here is this you just take it over attach it like so and then you just and every stitch every stitch as in every stitch count ends with the two front post on the on the back so I've done two squares so that's one two because you can see them sticking out on the back you can see them sticking in that they're, they're in but these on the back they're sticking out so that's where you change your stitch when you got that one done so that's one two and then all you do is just hide the thread the yarn as you go along I hope I'm explaining myself okay and you're following on not really good at these sort of things. You're hiding it. When you're doing a front post, you just bring the thread down and take it up like so. And you're just hiding it as you go. And when you do a normal front post, a normal, sorry, double crochet, you just put it above and just do your normal double crochet that way. And so on. That is if you had to do it all the way. Now that I've done two stitches as if you can two squares. As you can see there's two front posts. One double, two front posts, that's a stitch. So, well, one more double front posts I can't see for looking. There you go. So that's two. Done. And that's if you had to carry the yarn from there to there, say, attaching it. But if I wanted 
to say take the black as well so I wanted to carry it all that's quite easy as well because you just do the same by carrying it over you just find your double you always change yarn when the on the front post on on the normal double crochet never on the front post so you put it in and you carry both of them threads yarn splitting Like so. And if I wanted to take this up on the next one, so I only wanted to do one stitch. <clears throat> you take this back up. Take it through. And I'd hide that because I don't like that showing. So I'd take that up and in I go and bring it through. And now that has disappeared. But if it was just the one stitch there, I would have added add another bobbin because I wouldn't like this yellow showing all the way through because there's nothing you can really do about that. You can't really hide that, really. So, and that's how. I do personally my um waffle stitch and this is another one I've done you've seen the that one and this is another one I've done and the back of that one I've just got to sew in the ends to this one I find it really nice and easy to do and no hassle whatsoever but like I said you always change colour on the back of the design and I use the back of the design as my front. And then once you've changed your colours on the back, you then do another row to complete what would have been a row. So you do two rows to one row on the graph. So that's it. Thank you. Bye.